My name is Leticia Hernandez, Leticia Hernandez Linares on the page. Um, I use a different name when I publish my poetry. I'm a writer uh, because when I was graduating from college and I was the first in my family to graduate from college, my mother said, I want credit too. So Leticia Hernandez, Leticia Hernandez Linares. I'm a writer, a performer, an educator. I have worked in Latino communities throughout California for the last 20 something years. I have worked in direct service, in leadership, I've run organizations, and now I'm working in school reform. I have uh, done a lot of work with young women. I am a graduate of a women's college and that I got to after attending community college. And uh, I have focused a lot of my work on making sure that young people like me, daughters and sons of immigrants and immigrants themselves, have the information that they need and have resources to have um, to level the playing field and be able to salir adelante. I uh, began writing in the early 90s when I was exposed to other Latina writers and when I learned that our stories were not only worth telling but needed to be told and were beautiful to tell. Uh, writers like Gloria Anzaldúa, Sandra Cisneros, Denise Chavez, Ruben Martinez, Luis Rodriguez, Naya Quiñones, I, I, they all opened doors for me and they keep opening as I meet other elders about the possibilities and the history that we are part of. When I was growing up, I, uh, I knew that I wanted to, well, I knew that I did not want to get married and I did not want to have children. <laughs> that was like the last thing on my mind. I wanted something and I didn't know what it was and I didn't know how to get it. And my parents didn't really have the information as um, they had arrived in this country a few months before I was born they didn't really have the resources of here are the classes you need to take or you can go to college right away or you can go live at a college or you can get scholarships and that information wasn't that readily available to me um, so it felt like a struggle to find out oh I could go to not only a state school but I could go to any school and I did end up going to a four-year university after attending community college but it was very difficult to carve the path on my own um, in addition to that, it was very challenging explaining to my parents that their only female daughter was going to leave the house at 18 without a man's permission or hand taking me out of the house. So fortunately, my parents were open enough to, once I literally physically took them to the school and said, this is where I want to go and this is what I want to do, that they, that they were okay with it and I didn't have to you know, do some dramatic getaway, run away and never look back kind of thing. Although I was very tempted many times because of the sort of conditions in my house, but that's another story. Um, and so I feel like I defied expectations in my family. Um, at 23, I had an uncle nudging me like, you know, you better hurry up. Your cousin who's 18 just had a baby. Where's your baby? So I think that something that was difficult was being different and wanting to be free, wanting to travel, wanting to explore, wanting to be a writer, and there not being a map for that. So I feel like I've created my own map and uh, people have constantly tried to put me in boxes and I'm always sort of breaking them apart and breaking out of them. Um, once the higher I got though, I thought, you know, that I was accomplished, that I had, you know, I had advanced degrees and I have good jobs and, you know, I'm in an, I went to an Ivy League university for graduate school, the University of Pennsylvania, and I was the only Latina in my year of my department, the English department, and I lived with the only Latina in the history department. Um, this was in the early 90s and we were very few, it was very isolating. and. Um, the things that I had to kind of aguantar at that point, questions, daily questions of what I was in the city of Philadelphia where it's very black and white, um, you know, assumptions and racist things that professors would say to me. Um, so I once was asked if I was from El Salvador, uh, as in El Salvador CA. That was actually a serious question. Um, you know, I was asked, if, what did I study in Chicano literature? Did I study newspaper articles about gangs? Um, so the higher you get, the actually more fierce and difficult it gets to maneuver people's racism, people's um, assumptions about you as a woman and a woman of color. Um, recently I was on a trip, as I was the director of an organization for young women called Girl Source, and we provided leadership and employment and um, college information and opportunities and training for young women, and uh, I was visiting someone and I, I was leaving the house, it was in Los Angeles, and I was asked by someone if I was leaving work early, 
But no, I was like head to toe in my Banana Republic gear, my little professional wannabe. I'm like a professional. And it was like, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, all people see is this and what they expect to go along with that. So um, constantly proving myself and, uh, um, and pushing the dirt out of my own path and not going on any pre predetermined path has been something I'm proud of and something I'm still doing.